So the House finally passed a bill, so we might not have a government shutdown. Then we'll look at sentiment, as well as the economic data. Then we'll take a look at my results for the week, and my thoughts going into next week. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So the House passed a 45-day measure to keep the government open with bipartisan support. They say it was GOP crafted, but they did get a lot of support from the Democrats in the House. That's really how they got this passed. The last one that they tried to pass did not have any Democratic support, and they couldn't get all the Republicans to vote for it either. And right now, they say it is stuck in the Senate with Michael Bennett holding up the final vote because there is no Ukraine funding in the bill. That is something Democrats really wanted, but Republicans were not willing to do it. But apparently, that is the current sticking point. Congressman Bowman in the House pulled the fire alarm in an attempt to stop the bill, and they say that's going to go punished, which is pretty hilarious. And you can see here McCarthy's happy face after passing the bill 335 to 91, so clearly bipartisan support in order to keep the government open. It's always very costly when the government shuts down, and it creates a lot of uncertainty in the markets and throughout really the real economy. Overall, it's not a great thing. It does seem like these negotiations always go to the H hour. Moving over to the fear and greed index, you can see we're back into fear. We hit extreme fear for like one day, and then we rallied a little bit and got back into fear. Market momentum back into fear, still below the 125 moving average, not great. Stock price strength, also not great. Breath continues to move lower here. We'll look at that a little bit closer on the charts. It does look okay. Put call ratio, absolutely getting elevated here, well above one for the overall markets. We'll take a look at Max Payne later as well. VIX showing a little bit of strength. We'll look at that one as well a little bit closer. It did reject on the Thursday-Friday session, but still looks stronger above that SMA. Safe haven demand, definitely extreme fear. Junk bond demand, however, continues to hold up quite well. We've been watching the JNK charts just about every video, and they have held up very well, especially when compared to TLT and long-term government debt. Moving over to sentiment here. Bullish sentiment all the way down at 27.8% for this week. Definitely getting into that extreme fear range. Bears getting all the way up to 40, a little bit extended. You can see just how much higher the historical average that is, just how much lower the bull average is. Neutral, basically right on the money, definitely ticking towards that bearish side. And we're in a range where we could potentially see some support. Again, we'll look at that closer on the charts. Moving over to the economic calendar for Monday, you can see ISM manufacturing PMI, manufacturing prices. We have Fed Chair Powell speaking here at 11 o'clock. That could be interesting, as well as a couple of FOMC members. Looking at Tuesday, we got the JOLTS report. That's going to be interesting. We really need the government to stay open if they're going to release some of this information. It could potentially be affected if the government closes down. I don't think that's going to happen at this point, but it's something to consider. Looking at Wednesday, we have Global Services PMI, fairly interesting. Non-manufacturing PMI and non-manufacturing prices at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Looking at Thursday here, imports, exports at 8.30, initial jobless claims 8.30. A couple of Fed members speaking. And then on Friday, we have non-farm payrolls. That's going to be the big one, as well as the unemployment rate. Expected to step down just a little bit. Definitely interesting. If this surprises to the upside, that could be quite bearish in my opinion. Moving over to Max Payne, basically the same as last week for Max Payne, a little bit higher here at 432 than current prices. Total options, 800,000, very low. Put call ratio, 2.69. Put wall here at 420, lots of interest at that level. 425, also fairly interesting. Could absolutely move a little bit lower. 430, pretty low, not worth paying attention to. 436, fairly interesting on the call side. That is the highest call strike. Again, lots of puts in the market here, but overall not a ton of options to go this week as it is the first week of the month. Moving over to the charts, starting off with the S&Ps here on the monthly chart. Since we got a monthly close this week, you can see we moved from that trend line up here. This was a shorter term trend line marking those tops all the way down to this very long term trend line sitting at 42.36. This is one of those very, very long trend lines. You can see that same one coming back here, marking the tops in February of 20, mark the top in September of 20. And then we got back above that level, a couple of interactions here in June of 22. And zooming in to show you that a little bit closer, you can see we touched that level, touched the nine-month moving average. 
at 2460 as well. Momentum definitely fading here. Not great on the monthly close. Doesn't mean that it has to continue here. We did get a candle very similar to this for December of 22. The next month was basically a complete reversal of the month. And then we ended up chopping higher over the next several months. So absolutely could hold this level, but 42.40 is going to be critical at that trend line as well as the nine month moving average. If that breaks down, you can see the highly traded zone at 41.40. And then I do have some support back down around that 4,000 level, which obviously would be critical if we got into that range. Moving over to the weekly just for a moment, you can see we basically got a doji, still bearish momentum, still bearish RSI. We got below the 50 line on RSI, not great. In terms of levels, we are back testing this level from August of 22. If this level breaks down, you can see it's a clear move down to that highly traded zone around 21.25 in terms of levels. So critical level here. If that breaks down, next level is going to be these previous tops. Looking at the daily chart here, you can see we did have a little bit of strength from Wednesday into Thursday. Pulled back a little on Friday here, but it still looks like the short term is going to be a pullback. At least up to around 439, that would be interesting. Also have a level here at 435.88, which would be a nice little bounce from current levels. At this point, I'm not looking for a change of trend. I still think we're going to maintain this downtrend, but a pullback to trend resistance does make sense over the next week or so. Moving over to the NASDAQ on the monthly chart. Again, you can see we had a pretty bearish month, down about 5%. Momentum ticking down for the first time in a while. We'd been on this upswing here, and now the monthly chart is saying that we're going to be pulling back at least. Doesn't mean that we can't have any upswings, but overall it does seem like the monthly trend is going to pull back at least a little bit. Nine-month moving average sitting right around that 14,000 level. Long-term trend support sitting at 13,825. Overall, it seems like the NASDAQ does have a little bit more downside over the longer term. Moving over to the weekly chart, you can see we ended up with a doji on the week, which is interesting, up 0.1% on the week. Still bearish momentum, still bearish RSI, but again, more of a neutralized candle. You can see we're at this previous dip low. In terms of levels, we're kind of at the peaks here from February of 22. You could also argue that we're at the low here from October of 21. Those could be some interesting levels. If they're going to hold, they need to hold basically right where we are now get a little bit of a rally back above this longer term trend that I'm watching. That's still sitting up around that 14,850 area, which would be about 100 points higher from current levels. Moving over to the daily chart just for a moment. Again, similar thesis to the SPY. Big wick low, big rally on Thursday. Did gap up, but fell throughout the session on Friday. Still holding above my level at 357.54. Definitely an interesting level. It needs to hold that if it's going to rally from here. Again, looking for a pullback, at least in the short term, up towards that 367.63 area, along with VWAP and the 21 EMA, all in that same zone. Moving over to the Russell on the monthly chart, you can see we're down pretty substantially. 5% in August, 6.29% in September. Not great. Coming off of that same rejection, right at 198.75. We've been watching that level for a while. The question is, are we going to hold once again in this 172.82 area? You can see we've thrown so many wicks into this area. And it continues to hold. If it does, we could see another rally back up into the same zone. You could argue these lows are getting a little bit higher each time, grinding slowly higher. But very bearish month, and you need to see something a little bit more convincing, in my opinion. Momentum back towards bearish. RSI stepping back towards bearish here on the monthly. Looking at the weekly chart, you can see we were up just a little bit on the week, 0.04%. Two weeks ago was super bearish for the Russell, 3.78% to the downside. Bearish momentum, bearish RSI. Really want to see this hold in this same zone. We've been talking about it for a while. You can see that 172.60 area where we chopped for a while before seeing a significant rally. If we're going to hold a higher low, it needs to happen now. If we're going to double bottom at this same level watching that 172 area, does seem like it could hold, but we need to see it happen soon. Could get another sideways candle and then a bounce. But this is still a downtrend. Highly traded zone sitting at 184.79, which would be a nice little rally from current levels. Moving over to the daily chart, you can see that downtrend we've been watching. A little bit of a rally over the last three days. Friday was not great. 21 EMA sitting at 181.96. VWAP right behind it, all in the same zone around 182 which would be a couple of points higher from current levels. Momentum on the shorter time frame starting to step towards bullish. You do have to respect that. If we get a full retest of this downtrend, you can see the wick here 
on that trend, wick high, same area. And that would put us right in that same range, 182 to 184. Moving over to the Dow on the monthly. In terms of technicals, this looks terrible. You have a high, lower high here. You could argue this is still a little bit higher than the previous high in December, November of 22. It needs to hold that 21 EMA on the monthly chart sitting at 333. Highly traded zone sitting at 337.94. If this breaks down from this area and we start to see all of these levels taken out, you could argue that this is a lower high setup. Looking back at this midpoint all the way down at 288, that would be a very interesting level. You can see that marked the highs here pre-COVID as well. Momentum stepping down, RSI stepping down, just like everything else. Again, if it's going to hold, it really needs to do it soon. If it's going to break down, we could have a long way to go. Looking at the weekly chart, you can see that 55 EMA sitting at 333.57. That is the last EMA here on the weekly chart. 200 SMA sitting all the way down at 317.29. If this breaks, you would expect it to come into that same area. You could also see this low here from March in that same zone. And I have a level at 317.72 marking that low, making this a very interesting level. And it does seem like we might break back into that level on the weekly chart. Everything says we're still going in that direction. Daily chart on the Dow looks a little bit less convincing than the other ones. You can see that Friday session closed below the low from Thursday. That's much weaker than the other indices. We're also below my 335.91 level, which means I'm not really looking for support until we get down to that 329.40 level. You could argue you might find a little bit of support in that 333.50 level like we talked about on the weekly charts interesting level that does also mark the low from this wick on wednesday could be an interesting trade but realistically i would expect it to go through that area down to that next horizontal support you can see we are below all the emas and smas here on the daily chart on the dow moving over to the equal weighted s p's here on the weekly chart looks very similar to the dow and the russell kind of combined here had that double top like the russell did breaking down but doesn't look as weak as the Dow you have the 200 week moving average sitting at 136.10 highly traded zone right where we are now you can see those wick lows interesting level at 140.24 if that breaks next level for me 137.23 and then I would expect to overthrow that down to the 200 SMA big volume on the week on a doji I would expect that to be profit taking from this down move which was fairly significant from the highs again if this structure is going to hold even sideways price action, it does need to hold this previous low, in my opinion. Moving over to the daily chart, I did want to highlight that we did see a similar support move to the S&Ps. You can see that wick low here on Wednesday, rally on Thursday, pullback on Friday, but still a higher low. And that could just be a pullback from the nine-day moving average. Initial test, find a little bit higher low support. And if we rally up to this kind of grouping of EMAs and SMAs, that would put us up to 146.20. Could be a very interesting level. Highly traded zone just behind that at 174.50. Moving over to copper versus gold. We are back on track with this move. I expected this to set up a higher low and rally from there. We did get the higher low, did rally a little bit, pulled back here, kind of double bottomed at this previous area. Then we got a super bullish candle on the weekly, pushing up towards my 2022 level. We didn't get all the way there. Overall, I'm still expecting this to push up to 2088. But as this continues to rally, this is positively correlated with equities. So we should expect a little bit of a rally in equities, in my opinion. Moving over to SPY Russell and NASDAQ Russell, you can see we did see a little bit of stalling out of these ratios. Had a pretty big bearish week on the SPY Russell, pulling back from that 242 level engulf the previous candle pulling back on momentum and because of that I did re-enter into a Russell position on Thursday and then rolled that out into Friday and then into Monday overall I do think the Russell is back in play a little bit obviously it was pretty out of play for two weeks ago where it had a massive bearish week but right now it does seem like it's in a more interesting zone and it's a little bit cheaper than it was both of these ratios have kind of stalled out or they're pulling back Moving over to the SPX divided by the M2 money supply, you can see this critical level that we've been watching at 2205, marking the most recent three tops. And we are pulling back from that level here now. Going back in history here, you can see the only time we've really maintained any price action above that level was during the dot com bubble. And then after that, we broke all the way down into this 14 area. Anytime you're really below that 14 level, it does seem like a pretty good time to buy. 
2008 crisis here ended up being a nice buying opportunity. Got into that 14 level again on the COVID dip. Also ended up being a pretty good buying opportunity. And zooming in here, you can see that big bearish month that we had. Momentum stepping down, breaking down from that same level. And that could be an indicator that we're due for a couple of months of downside. Doesn't mean we can't see a Santa Claus rally or at least some sideways price action into the end of the year. But overall, next year, it does seem like we are set for some lower prices. In terms of levels on the weekly chart, we did hit that 2050 level. Currently, it is holding, still bearish momentum, still bearish RSI. It does seem like we are breaking down. Last time we got into this 50 level the first time, tested that level, rallied back up to that same high. So certainly could do that here, like I said, going into the end of the year. Otherwise, we got into this zone previously, did wick that. 2125 level before breaking down all the way to that 1911 area. We also have the 200 SMA sitting at 1958. Certainly could break down to that level as well. Overall, this structure does not look good on the S&Ps divided by the M2 money supply. Moving over to Apple and Tesla, you can see this wick low down to this trend. Touched that level, got back above my next level at 170.90. That level needs to hold if we're going to see any kind of bounce. Otherwise, if this breaks down, there's pretty significant downside in my opinion. Still watching the 55-week moving average down at 161.58. It's also worth noting that we are well below the lows here from December of 21. And the highly traded zone does seem like there was some profit taking on this colossal run that we had. All the way from the 125 area up to that almost 200 level before we broke back down. Apple seeing some things in China that does not make the stock look super appealing right now. Also, their growth is slowing fairly substantially. Looking at Tesla here, this structure doesn't look super great either. You can see a high here in September, October of 22. Colossal down move. Since then, we've been in a higher high type environment until the most recent high here. So we had a high in July. We had a lower high in September. Broke down from that level here. We're still holding the 21 week moving average at 241.64. Zooming in here so you can see that level clearly holding that, looking for a little bit of a rally from that level. Momentum bearish, but not super convincing. We did see a little bit of divergence on Tesla, which is currently playing out to the upside a little bit, but the weekly chart does not look great. Even if we come back up here and test this, that would push us up to 266. And then I would expect that level to hold, but indicating that we would break down from that area. And then we would have to see what happens after that. Moving over to Microsoft and NVIDIA. Haven't talked about Microsoft in a while. It has not looked great. It threw a big wick on 17 July. Threw a big wick to the upside on the week of 17 July. And since then, it's looked pretty weak. Pulled back for four straight week. Rallied up a little bit. And then it's pulling back again. At a strong level, 315 could be interesting. You can see that marked the high here in March of 22. If that level breaks, you would expect to move back down towards this 285 to 287 area could be interesting. Bearish momentum, bearish RSI does not look fantastic in the short term. NVIDIA did have a nice week, but overall this looks like a topping structure. Of course, NVIDIA has been on a colossal run and I wouldn't bet against it right now, but the technicals do not look great over the last few weeks. Moving over to staples and discretionary. Staples have been a dumpster fire. We've been watching this fall through the floor. It's taken out all the levels here on the weekly chart. It is below my 68.91 level as well. And the next one for me is 66.27. This looks super bad here on staples, which is interesting. It's been holding in this zone for a while. Now it's broken down pretty substantially. Discretionary, on the other hand, OG on the week, 0.03%. Also got very close to the 200 week moving average at 156.27. Tesla is showing a little bit of strength and I would expect discretionaries to show a little bit of strength here. If we continue to see staples falling through the floor and discretionaries rallying a little bit, that could be a risk on play here for the next few weeks. Moving over to breadth here on the weekly chart, you can see we are at pretty critical levels here on the 50 day average. Last time we were here, we had a substantial rally. Not quite as low as the June or September of 22 lows, but still pretty low on the 50-day average. 200-day, still holding up fairly well. Again, June or September of 22 lows, significantly lower than current levels. But this is not great either. 36.23 continues to hold. We've talked about it before. If that breaks, it's a pretty significant down move, in my opinion, to the 24 of 25 area. I don't really think that that's going to happen here. 
what we really need to see is a little bit of a rally here, a pullback, cooling, see a smaller rally in the 200-day average, a bigger rally in the 50-day, and then once we establish a lower high, then we would see that bigger move, in my opinion. I just think we're a little bit oversold coming off of this double top. Moving over to yields just for a moment, two-year yield. It has been grinding higher, but not as crazily here as the 10-year. This is going pretty parabolic. We've been talking about this for a while. This is driving equities lower. Most people expect this to get to at least 4.75, if not 5%. It is super overbought. It is still in bullish momentum on the weekly chart, so you can't discount it here. But we are seeing a reversion of the yield curve. 10-year yield rocketing higher, 2-year yield grinding higher, but not nearly as bullish, and it ended up being down on the week. Moving over to the dollar on the weekly chart, we had another bullish week. That is a ridiculous number of weeks in a row here now, currently on 11 weeks in a row of bullishness. Hit that 106.84 level, ended up pulling back slightly from that level and trend. Still bullish momentum, still bullish RSI. It does seem like this is going to go higher, but at some point this does have to pull back a little bit. Just like the 10-year yield did, did start to show a little bit of weakness. This isn't going to go straight up forever. Obviously, the structure is still very bullish, and you do have to respect that. But at some point, we're going to see at least a little bit of a pullback. The question is when. Moving over to the VIX on the weekly chart, you can see two weeks in a row of bullishness. Basically, a doji for this week hit that 55 EMA and started to pull back a little bit. Still bullish momentum, still bullish RSI, still coming off of a double bottom. You have to respect the structure. The question is when are we going to see a little bit of a pullback? You can see here we had two big candles in a row, hit trend resistance, and then pulled back pretty substantially for the next several weeks. The question is, are we going higher from here, or is this rally basically done after hitting the 55? Honestly, I think we might see one more good spike higher, potentially all the way up in that 2250 area. That could be interesting. Momentum in RSI, still bullish, so you do have to respect that. In terms of my accounts, I was up 0.3% on the week, which is not too bad. The NASDAQ was up 0.1%, so a little bit higher than the NASDAQ on the week. In terms of positions, you can see I have a 177 put for Monday. That's in a small profit right now. I, again, I think the IWM is in a pretty decent spot. I wouldn't mind holding these shares. I could roll it out. We'll see how it plays out going into the Monday session. Looking at the queues, I still have my core position here with a 385 call have a massive credit on that $5.35 going out to Wednesday so pretty set on that for a while I also have a 362.5 call for $3.50 if the market starts to get a little bit too bullish I might take that one off like I said I do see some signs of bullishness but we still need a little bit more confirmation in my opinion let me know down in the comment section what you think of the government shutdown while I was filming this it looks like that Senate did pass that bill coming through the house so it looks like we've avoided it, at least in the short term, for the next month or so. The question is what happens then, and it does still seem pretty uncertain in my opinion, but at least it's averted here in the short term. Otherwise, if you got any value out of this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading, and have a great day.